Hello friends, this is author Kirsten Larson. I have heard some people asking about how you can use Scrivener for your picture books. So I thought I would do a short video and show you what that might look like. So I have just um, hit the Scrivener icon to open a new project and I'm going to create a new project. You'll see a lot of different formats that you can use. But honestly, if you're writing a picture book, um, I find it's just as easy to start with a blank project. If you were following my OneNote um, videos, you'll see, remember that we were using OneNote to work on a project about zebras. So I thought I would go ahead and continue with zebras here. So I'm going to give my project a name, zebras and it's gonna create the new document for us. So you'll see on the left toolbar, you'll see um, three different areas. You have our you know, research, trash, um, and the draft. Um, so normally what I do, you can keep your research in OneNote, but sometimes, um, especially if you're writing nonfiction, you may have some key sources that you want to see on an ongoing basis um, because you're going to refer back to them a lot. So you might want to import them into the research section. So if I, um, let's pull one of them up on the web. So I go back into my OneNote and you'll remember the San Diego Zoo, um, the article about zebras was a source for me. So maybe this has a lot of good information. I want to refer back to it a lot while I'm writing. So I just um, highlight and copy the address of this source and then when I go back to Scrivener I can edit file import and I can import this web page about zebras so I'll say San Diego Zoo zebras okay and I'll show you what that looks like so there are different views in Scrivener if I want to see the full document there it is um, and it has all my information right here now let me show you how this might be helpful you'll see there's a little toggle spit split screen mode in Scrivener so if you're referring to research documents heavily you may want to split your screen you can either do side by side or um, you can do a top bottom split by holding the option and what you can do then is maybe you have the document you're writing in up top. And if it would be great if, and let's see, well, let's find a fact about zebras down here. Um, okay, there are seven subspecies. Okay, so you can see I can refer back and forth typing while I'm referring to my research. And that's not all. Um, so if I hit the little info button, that's going to that's gonna show the inspector, which gives you a lot of cool tools. So while I'm writing, I really don't want to forget where this information came from. I want to make a note that it came from the San Diego Zoo article. So I might go ahead and um, footnote it. So if I hit the little that little word balloon is comments and I can either write a comment which is the word balloon or I can write a little footnote and I'm not going to go through the process of formatting right now but I'm going to say this is um, San Diego Zoo website okay and then that shows up um, right there and when I export I can have that show up as an endnote or a footnote Okay, another cool thing about um, OneNote is, or not OneNote, Scrivener is, uh, let's say I'm going to send this book out for critique. Before I do, I might want to take a snapshot of it. So this is um, kind of freezing your manuscript at a, no a moment in time. And you can see, and I could say, uh, this is my first draft. 
Okay. And let's say that I get some, some notes back from my fellow writers and I want to make a change. They're like, oh no, this is a book about zebras. Why did you capitalize? Um, there are seven subspecies and then, um, you know, they say, hey, you should give some information about their lifespan. Okay, so this is my current draft, but the cool thing is I still have my first draft. So if you look over on this panel, um, you can see that my first draft is still there. Um, so you can kind of um, keep as many drafts right here as you want. And if you don't like you can compare the drafts and there's also ways to restore previous drafts if you decide that you want to go back. So that's one way of handling it. The way I like to do it, just because um, it's the way my brain works, is I actually like to cut and paste different drafts. So I may call this one, I may call, I'll just make a new document by hitting the, the plus button. And I'll say this is my first draft that's what it looked like. And then this one is my second draft. And that way, um, I just like having the whole file and I like being able to see it in the main pane. But, but you can do the same thing on the side over here, you know, calling this one the second draft. It's, it's the same thing. I just like the freedom of being able to see it in the main draft. Okay, so um, you can insert comments if you want to come back, you know, make sure to verify this with a second source. Um, um, let's say I just want to write and I don't want to have this busyness. You can click um, this little button here, which will enter composition mode, and it sort of blocks out everything else around you. So um, you can just type away. Okay, and then when you are done with that, um, you can escape and come back to your document. Okay, so this is really cool, um, but how do I get my my work out of here? Because not everybody um, uses Scrivener. If you're not doing a lot of footnoting, honestly, it's just as easy to highlight, copy, and dump this information directly into a Word document. But if you are writing nonfiction and you have a lot of um, footnotes or endnotes, you're going to want to push this little icon right here and it's going to comp compile your document. So I want to compile for Microsoft Word because I'm going to send this to my critique group. I don't need them to see the first draft. I want them to see the second draft. So whatever is checked is what they are going to see. Um, I don't honestly worry too much about the formats, um, but you can, if you click on the little wheel, the little gear wheel, you'll see you have some options. You can remove footnotes or leave them in because I'm writing nonfiction, I wanna leave them in. You can remove comments or you can remove annotations. For right now, I'm just gonna leave that all in and I'm gonna hit compile. And it'll ask me where do I wanna save my zebras. And we should be good to go. So let's check it out. Yeah, so you'll see I have a footnote here and it refers back to the San Diego Zoo website. So those are some of the, the key features that I use in, um, that I use in Scrivener. So again, this is kind of like your file cabinet. You have a section for where you can put your drafts. Um, you have a section where you can keep kind of like a file of research. Um, you can use 
this little um, icon allows you to, to split your screen and to see more than one thing at one time. Um, for example, if you want to look at your research and your draft at the same time. And then by clicking on this blue eye for the inspector, um, it allows you to access other things like a place to take notes, um, a place to take snapshots of your document, um, a place to add footnotes and comments. And to get into that composition mode, you're clicking this little expand button that'll block out all your surroundings and then this will help you compile so that's been your your short and sweet tutorial for scrivener i hope it's been helpful